Hey everyone, this is Scott Parkin, co-host of Green and Red podcast, uh, traveling right now, but I did want to put out a uh, quick piece about the passing of the great organizer and educator, uh, Jane McAlevey. Uh, she passed away earlier this week from cancer, from cancer of the blood, actually. actually. Uh, she was a much loved organizer, author, author of several books, uh, and educator. Uh, her books include Raising Hell, Raising Expectations, No Shortcuts, um, and then uh, A Collective Bargain. We actually interviewed her co-host, Abby Lawler, about uh, the Collective Bargaining book. Um, uh, not too long ago. Um, Jane was a organized many a union drive, many a hard fought union drive, uh, working with uh, unions like SEIU. Um, she also ran uh, Organizing for Power Project, uh, which educated tens of thousands of people, ordinary people, workers, et cetera, on how to campaign, strategize, you know, go back and reassess and then re-strategize and re-campaign. Uh, she, she was a force of nature. Um, I never personally met her, but I've been very influenced as an organizer myself by, you know, what she talked about and what she wrote about. Um, you know, she did a big focus on building power, particularly building worker power, and a big focus on deep organizing. Uh, there's um, it's real evident in some of her work where she talks about the differences between advocacy, mobilizing, and organizing. And it's very much a lesson for people working in social change and as a person who's, you know, part of the nonprofit industrial complex around environmental and climate issues. I've taken the lessons around advocacy, mobilizing, and, and deep organizing. And advocacy and mobilizing are the sort of things where it's the sort of lower lift of what you can do, but it's not actually building power. And so Jane actually talked a lot about uh, building power and building worker power. Um, but Jane was also, and I'm gonna get into that in just a second, but I also wanna say that Jane was a, a dedicated leftist and a dedicated anti-capitalist, a person who fought against the bosses and against the capitalist system. She started out as a student organizer on anti-apartheid issues and actually at 19 was the leader of a, a divestment movement in New York, um, a student divestment movement in New York, which also sort of harkens us to what's happening today on campuses around the country, around uh, Israel and Palestine. But Jane cut her teeth on doing strategic organizing uh, on the anti-apartheid issue to where they put pressure on state universities all over New York, including a pressure campaign on the then governor of New York, Mario Cuomo. Uh, you know, she talks actually quite a lot about this action that she did at a, a board of trustees meeting where they actually locked themselves um, down in the um, finance office during the trustee board meeting. And it actually happened on campuses all over New York. Uh, it led to her going to jail. It led to her getting national attention. Um, and it eventually led to the biggest divestment of the anti-apartheid divestment movement. Um, she also worked as, um, worked on Central America issues and was in Nicaragua doing construction brigades. Um, and the thing to note there is that as a person who later becomes very involved with the labor movement is that she was at that point, she found herself very much at odds with the labor movement as she saw labor unions backing actually right-wing dictatorships and death squads that were, you know, behind the Contra Wars and were, you know, responsible for, you know, mass murder in countries like El Salvador and Guatemala. Um, and so that's actually a, a, a sort of like important note for someone who gets involved with the labor movement and in many ways, butts head with the supposed the, the so-called leadership of the, of the labor movement through her career. Uh, the, the other important piece is that she also 
spent time as an environmental justice organizer and very much saw the link between communities which were facing um, facing you know pollution and poisoning by industry uh, and so the sort of community connections in that organizing also influenced her sort of later strategy and thinking about how the labor movement could be more effective. Um, and then just sort of shifting to her sort of like greater work the way she did in the last couple of decades, which is around um, building worker power, educating people on, on, on worker power. Um, she talked a lot about the need um, for not just labor, but all social movements to organize and meet people where they are at, uh, have open transparent processes and they're strategizing to the point of open transparent process it, processes in bargaining with bosses, uh, something that the bosses don't want. Um, you know, being confrontational with the bosses, being confrontational with the politicians. Um, and then, you know, she had a very big focus on um, how to turn ordinary people into str strategic organizers. And there's this, um, there's this, what I would call a tendency within social, social change organizations and, you know, the nonprofit industrial complex and the union industrial complex and all of that, but really focus on paid um, organizers and paid staff. And I, I do think it's important for people to be compensated for their work. But I, I do think that part of what we need to do as organizers is transform, you know, many, many, many people into organizers uh, and teach them how to be strategic and how to win campaigns. And that was a, a, a big, uh, that was a big part of like what Jane McAlevey taught us. Um, and, you know, when we talk about strategy, there's, there's a lot of obituaries out there, like very well-written obituaries actually, which talk a lot about her work and who she was a big emphasis, and I've already said this word multiple times, but strategy. And so strategy, strategy, strategy is something that she used to say all the time. And, you know, just like simple questions like, are we making a big enough crisis for the power holders? Are we isolating those power holders who are our opponents uh, from, you know, their community, from their uh, people who sort of like hold them up and, and, and support them and like sort of give them social and political and economic capital? Um, are we uniting and amplifying our allies uh, enough to build not just, you know, a campaign in one workplace or a campaign focused on like one environmental nonprofits uh, idea of what's strategic or what we're going to move, but are we doing enough to lift up our allies and build a movement? And then are we shifting, and, and this is all leading to the sh a shift in a balance of power. Are we, uh, building up enough of a movement to be able to change capital to challenge the political establishment. And, and that's like an important question. Um, and then most importantly, I think a practical question that Jane would often ask of, uh, of organizers is, are we doing enough to justify our political project? You know, if we just solely focus on things like tactics, like disrupting uh, a, a, a shareholders meeting or you know, just a bunch of protests outside of a building or even like organizing a union in like one workplace or getting a, getting a company to kind of adhere to what they've agreed to in a bargain. Is, is that enough? Is there, what is the bigger picture? What is the bigger goal? What is the end goal here? Um, you know, Jane fought and taught and organized her entire adult life and she, she did it to the bitter end. Uh, and there's, you know, many interviews and many articles by her uh, just in the last few months before she passed away. Um, and I encourage everyone to go and read those and, and learn more about what she has talked about and taught us if you haven't, if you haven't already familiar with it. And then I just want to kind of close with a quote from Jane, which I really kind of caught me, um, struck me. Um, but she said, for me, the question is whether you understand your role as an organizer as fundamentally doing radical political education. And that's, and to me, that's actually speaks a lot to what we all should be doing as organizers. We shouldn't be just winning one campaign against one company or one campaign and organizing one workplace, but you know, we should be radical political educators and radical political organizers across the board. 
Um, so just want to say rest in power, Presente Jane McAlevey. Um, and we hope that your memory is a blessing to those who knew you. And just want to say that your memory and the lessons in which you taught is a blessing to the rest of us. Uh, this is Scott Parkin with the Green and Red Podcast, signing off. Um, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're listening to this on the audio platforms, please uh, give us a rate and review. And if you really like us, go to greenredpodcast.org and hit the support button or become a patron at patreon.com backslash greenredpodcast. Um, and in the spirit of Jane McAlevey, I hope everyone goes out and misbehaves and makes lots of trouble and, you know, does it strategically and organizes to kick some ass. Um, we'll talk to you again soon.